book readings with Miss Bernard. Hello all and welcome to day 20 of our Black History Month series. Today's story is Opal Lee and what it means to be free. The true story of the grandmother of Juneteenth. Written by Alice Faye Duncan. Illustrated by Katura A. Bobo. Let's begin. Happy Juneteenth Jamboree! Come and join the fun! Opal Lee waved to her great-grandson as he barreled across the park. He zipped past lines of picnic tables covered with platters of barbecue, baked beans, tomato tarts, and raspberry cobbler. He hurried past a leaping choir draped in purple robes. He danced a jig with cowboys playing fiddles, but they did not stop his flow. Buddy ran to the blooming tree where Opal Lee held court. Her braided hair was a silver crown. Her eyes were twinkling stars. Great grand dear, Buddy called. Tell us a Juneteenth story. Opal Lee raised her face to the sun as memories of yesteryear filled her vision. When she had been a Texas bud, like the children at her feet, Granddaddy Zach told freedom stories on his wooden porch. As Opal Lee remembered his words, she lifted her hands and cheered. Juneteenth means freedom, and now it's story time. Then Opal Lee began. Once upon a blazing sun, black bodies were bought and sold like cattle. Black men plowed the fields, but were not allowed to own the land. Black women cooked the food, but were not allowed to feast on roast and ribs from the master's table. Black children cleaned the one-room schoolhouses, but were not allowed to read or write. Earning and learning were against the law. Slavery was a thief. American slavery dragged on like a plague until January 1st, 1863. That's when President Lincoln wielded courage and raised his feathered pen. He signed the Emancipation Proclamation with a mighty stroke. On the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves shall be forever free. Glory, glory, glory. Freedom was dazzling news like a bright starry night. However, Texas was big and many miles away from Mr. Lincoln. White masters defied his words. Black bodies remained in bondage. They plowed. They cooked. They cleaned. Freedom did not ring through Texas in 1863. It was toiling times in the Lone Star State. For two years, five months, and 18 more weary days. Then, finally, Joy jumped on dancing feet in the Gulf town of Galveston. The year was 1865. The day was June 19th. Gordon Granger marched through Galveston with Union Army troops. The general raised his booming voice and spoke these righteous words. The people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Opal Lee danced in a circle. Freedom, hope, and joy divine. Juneteenth means it's freedom time. Can you imagine the excitement? Singing filled the air. Happy tears rolled down like rain. Black families leaped through cotton fields and played tambourines. It was a day of jubilee, perfect for Texas barbecue, watermelon, and sweet potato pie. Delicious delights they had been denied during servitude. Opal Lee told the children, 
Remember my words for safekeeping. Remember what I say. Juneteenth is bigger than Texas singing or dancing bands. Juneteenth is freedom rising and freedom is for everyone. Juneteenth is you and me. As the children clapped and cheered, Buddy tugged her sleeve. Great grand dear, he called. What was Juneteenth like when you were a kid? Opal Lee unwrapped another story. Blacks and whites lived separately when I was a child. Jim Crow signs littered old Fort Worth in every public place. Black families were banned from Forest Park Zoo, except one day of the year. On Juneteenth, we could picnic, party, and ride the Ferris wheel. I hated that zoo. I loved it too. The birdhouse was my favorite. Buddy groaned and shook his head. The old days don't sound good. Good and bad work together like the sun and rain. I spend good days on my granddaddy's porch reading poetry books. His farm was my playground. I ran across the fields and climbed the tallest oak. Glory, glory, glory. Some memories are chocolate sweet, but some memories cut and bruise. My saddest season started on Juneteenth day, 1939. An angry mob with flaming sticks burned my family's brand new house. Their broken minds and evil hearts were so afraid of black progress. The police made no arrests. My family moved away. And yet the embers burn, that fire still lives in me. And I learned a big lesson that Juneteenth day. Freedom is a golden coin. Struggle makes it shine. Hmm. And no matter how long it takes for freedom to stretch across the land, I will keep on teaching. I will keep on reaching. I will keep on walking. I will keep on talking. I will raise my voice on the prairie and the mountaintop until freedom rings. The children lifted their hands in praise. Freedom, hope, and joy divine. Juneteenth means it's freedom time. Opal Lee winked and chuckled. I think now it's time for barbecue, strawberry cake, and red Juneteenth punch. Glory, glory, glory. Buddy cheered and waved his hands. When he bounced up to leave, Opal Lee hugged him tightly. Then, just like birds in flight, all the children flocked into her arms. <laughs> Opal Lee studied their shining faces. Black, brown, bronze, gold, tan, white, freckles. As the children dashed away, she marveled at the bright future. She rested against the blooming tree and whispered into the wind, Remember my words for safekeeping. Remember what I say. Freedom is for everyone. Juneteenth is you and me. The end. And in the back of the book, there is a recipe for Juneteenth Red Punch Strawberry Lemonade and also a Juneteenth timeline of all the important facts. All right, this has been another book readings with Miss Bernard. I hope you enjoyed that story and come on back tomorrow for day 21 of our Black History Month series. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.